In this video I'll be putting together a vacuum chamber. These can be incredibly useful for a multitude of science experiments such as boiling room temperature water. Or in my case for degassing liquids to eliminate air bubbles. I purchased this vacuum pump from AliExpress which was a bargain at only 185 US dollars at the time of making this video. For my chamber I used a sturdy 10 litre stainless steel stock pot. To prevent the pot from imploding at full vacuum it's important to find a pot with a good wall thickness. The lid will be cut from 20 millimetre thick acrylic plastic. And the gauge, fittings and taps come as a kit set from AliExpress for only 30 US dollars. All up it cost me about 80 US dollars to build the chamber plus another 185 for the pump. I'll leave links to purchase the products in the video's description if you're interested. First I had to cut the 20mm sheet acrylic to fit the pot. This can be done with a jigsaw or bandsaw or other tools However since I have a brand new Xtool P2 CO2 laser machine in the workshop it would be a crime not to put it to use for this job. The Xtool software made it super simple to draw the tool pass for the lid. For this job I required a 21mm hole to mount the air fittings and an outside cut diameter of 280mm. With the job sent to the P2 laser machine it's time to start cutting. 20mm thick acrylic is the limit for this machine. The feed rate was a rather slow 1mm per second at 100% power and a single pass. And while the cut isn't the smoothest I've ever seen with some beam deflection causing some minor serrations towards the rear, overall the cut quality is more than acceptable for this type of job. Now I can move on to making the silicon seal. I've tried several different methods for making a seal with varying levels of success or failure. I've had issues with release agents not releasing, Seals too thin which means you have to press down the lid hard to create an airtight seal. And a few other failures which I won't bore you with. Ultimately this was the best method that worked for me. First dish soap works as a great release agent. Just be sure to use plenty of it. To compress the silicon flat I used a 10mm thick piece of acrylic cut to the same dimensions as my lid, but you could use any plastic or metal sheet to achieve the same thing. First I applied plenty of dish soap to prevent the silicon from sticking to my sheet of acrylic. Next I used a tube of 100% pure silicon and applied a generous bead of silicon around the edge of the lid. To create an even thickness of silicon around the edge I'm using several nuts as spaces in the centre. Then I place the sheet of acrylic I prepared with dish soap beforehand on top to press the silicon into a flat seal. After allowing the silicon 3 days to cure it was time to separate the lid. Thank you. 
If there are any defects in the seal, simply clean off the soap and apply more silicon as needed. With the lid finished, it was time to move on to assembling the air fitting kit. I used a combination of thread tape and liquid thread sealant. This proved to be a winning combo on the first try with zero leaks as you'll see later. Now the fittings can be mounted to the lid using the included seals and hardware. With that done, I moved on to addressing a common issue with most vacuum pumps, and that is oil mist vapour from the exhaust. Unscrewing the vent cap, we find a filter paper and a metal wool disc, which is only designed to prevent dust and debris from entering the pump housing. To fix this oil mist issue, I 3D printed a filter housing using PETG filament. After printing, I removed the extra build material and drilled out the holes in the lid. I'll modify the original vent cap so I can glue it using silicon into my filter housing. At the bottom of the filter, I'll use the original filter paper as a screen to prevent the fine grade steel wool I'm using as filter media from falling into the pump housing. I'll pack some in the bottom of the housing, then I cut three circles the size of my filter housing from a clean microfiber towel. The purpose of the towel is to capture any fine droplets of oil mist that manages to pass through the steel wool. I alternated layering the steel wool and microfiber towel until the filter was packed absolutely full. And after, I was delighted to see that there was no oil mist coming from the pump. Now I can connect the pump to the chamber using the included hose that came with the pump. Then close the vent tap and try pull a vacuum. After getting close to a perfect vacuum, I closed the outlet tap and disconnected the hose. After leaving the chamber for 30 minutes, I came back and the gauge hadn't moved, which meant there were no leaks and the chamber is ready to use. Thank you. 
You'll find more information on the hardware I used and links in the video's description if you're interested. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.